Uh, golfers, you know the PXG is on a mission to create the most high-quality, high-performance golf clubs in the game, but they are bringing that same passion for excellence to their new line of apparel, and I gotta say, they hit the center of the club face on that. They pured it, Tim. They pured it. Pured it. So head, pure. head over to pxg.com slash command and use code command at checkout, and you'll save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash command, code command to save 10% on apparel. pxg.com slash command, code command. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Second in Command of Ebree Watch Podcast. My name is Timothy Simons. I play Jonah Ryan on the television show Veep. Uh, my name is Matt Walsh, and I played uh, Mike McClintock, and we have a special guest today, Tim. We do. Funny friend, performer, mm -hmm. and Veep cast member. A Veep cast member. Wonderful wonderful person. One time almost wife of Jonah, or did you get married? Fiance. Fiance. Sorry, yes. never. Okay. Um, Mary Holland. Is Mary here. Holland. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. It was a real treat getting to revisit some of season six. Um, yeah. Very funny. We, oh, I forgot to say the thing. We are a Veep rewatch podcast as dimly remembered through the veil of memory. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Lou Morton gave that to us because we really was like four seasons of us being like of doing this other thing that was not great. But a ladder. Right. There was up, something about a ladder. The there lowest was, rung. A ladder. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. The lowest rung. Uh, the view of the show from the lowest rung on the highest ladder. Very high ladder. Wow. Like, look, not that'll great. make you think that'll yeah. that's a real head. Scratcher. Don't don't uh, <laughs> don't patronize me. Well, today we're going to loosely uh, I'm just going to get rid of my job, which is to read the oh. summary. Today is blurb season six, episode seven. Mm -hmm. As the Internet describes it, Selena waits for her portrait unveiling ceremony mm -hmm. and makes the effort to finish her book. Meanwhile, Jonah tries to get on this guest list for uh, Selena's event, the unveiling. Dan tries to work on his on-screen chemistry problem. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much Who it. Who was it written by? Is that part of my job too? It, it is. <sighs> and he got, oh, I know, Ian Maxstone Graham. Oh, he do, Ian. Uh, and, you know, he uh, is uh, a Tolman. I, 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 yes. And a scuba and I diver. Recall. And, and a, a scuba, scuba diver. And a runner and a serious runner. He's like an extreme oh athlete. Yeah. What? From, uh, yeah, isn't that yeah. crazy? That's Ian amazing. has lived like a, a for, he's a very, like for as large as he is, he's a very sort of soft-spoken guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. A, a true gentleman. Yes. I think is like a way that you would describe oh, him. Oh yeah, that was but my experience. he has too. lived a life and does like, but it's almost like he would almost never bring them up. If you were like, oh, have you ever done like any ultra marathons? He, he, he would not mention the fact that he's probably done ultra marathons. You know what I mean? My goodness. Yeah. I feel like if I did that kind of thing. That's the first thing I'd say to people <laughs> before I even say my name. I I run fifty miles at a at a go. At a go. At a time. At that's, a time. And yeah, like, I think that's worthy of bragging about. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I can't think of anything in my life that that, that is that impressive. I. <sighs> So uh, cool. Just to have a counter argument. Oh boy! And I Here we go. Oh, do not. Ooh, <laughs> what? It's just one step at a time. Oh no! Just anybody the, can do that. Oh, just does, keep stepping. Does the devil need an advocate? No, I guess what? I, <laughs> he is his own advocate. <laughs> so Aaron left. Um, Aaron left. Yeah, it would turn a phrase. Start devil need an advocate. That's a rare. Aaron laughs at purient jokes. Usually, like sexual in nature you know poopy pee -pee. poopy pee pee yeah. Yeah. my kind of humor yeah yeah I, i'm a sucker for that too right, i like let's... monkeys anytime a monkey's in a movie i'll laugh <laughs> um so we're at 17 <laughs> <laughs> right now we're, walsh is laughing about the idea of him laughing at a monkey in a movie Dude, right now. they're just funny they are very funny yeah. um uh, we are up to 17 aaron laughs since we've started working together it's pretty good yeah. Uh, and also, I like that we're starting the new year off right. This is uh, this won't air for a while. We're oh, pretty okay. far ahead. But I just so everybody knows, it's very early on in January of 2024. Feels like that's a good omen that we got an Aaron laugh that quickly. Yeah. Hit the ground running. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. Do you care? It feels good. You don't Do have I to care? care? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. no, I care. Okay. okay. Your, no, I your, can't pitch, care. your pitch went up. Yeah. 
care. Yeah. <laughs> I care, I care. Like, I care. Did you know Mary went to the same college as me? That's right. That's how we first bonded. That's Wait, like no, her right. pitch went up again. Now I don't know what no, to believe. No, that's legit. Well, I think that's, that's legit. legit. That's legit. Okay, that's, that's, that's legit. Mirth. That's yeah. joy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Northern Illinois. We... In DeKalb. That's right. Which is so weird because you're from Virginia? Yes. I remember a little bit. Again, that pitch went up. Are you from Virginia? That's real astonishment. That is real astonishment and astonishment and real flattery that that you remember that about me. Um, Yes, I'm from Virginia and then I went to Northern Illinois. And that's where you went. Why? I mean, it's an okay. I'm I'm a terrible alumni, and I had a great experience. But oh, why? You did? Well, because the 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 BFA acting program at Northern Illinois was very excellent. It, okay, and it was run by it was run by several great teachers, and there was a an, a Meisner acting teacher who uh, shaped the whole acting curriculum there. And so it was it was this intense Meisner program, and everybody went there to go study with her. Okay, okay, I'm we're, I, I okay. <laughs> Two things. Number one, the devil does not even need an advocate, but I just want to circle back to the idea that if you do, like, I've known a few people that run Ironman and they don't need any. Oh, okay. Oh, they don't need go. any oh, yeah, yeah, more yeah. people telling them they're great. Yeah, okay. that's They kind of right. already oh, they know. know. They okay. already know. But we recently had an episode, I can't remember which one, where we talked a lot about Meisner stuff, about the oh. repetition. So would you... Yeah. But my my story about of this was I never really took any Meisner, didn't really do any Meisner study in college. And so my experience with it is pretty limited. And mm. in Chicago, it was my girlfriend at the time and her roommate would take Meisner classes because ultimately everybody in the class just wanted to make out, needed an excuse to make out with each other. <laughs> so can you, can you talk about maybe some of your uh, thoughts on what was the draw of Meisner? Oh, to yeah, you? I'd be okay. happy to. Oh, because it this. ties directly into um, how I did meet you officially in person, which was through improv comedy at the Upright Citizens yeah. Brigade Theater. Yeah. Um, so what drew me to Meisner? So Meisner at its core is all about um, real, true... <laughs> Oh boy, I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> Meisner um, is a listener. He <laughs> listens to oh, our podcast. He fuck, comments. Really? Yeah. Shit. A lot um, of shatter in the YouTube comments from him. Oh, so this gosh. is going to be big for you. This is going to be big. Uh, uh, real true listening and, and, and reacting honestly in the moment, not pre planning anything, like letting, letting everything, letting yourself be fully present. So, um, so in the Meisner program, we, we didn't touch a script for two years or something. Like it was all about all the repetition and stuff was all geared towards getting you into a place as a performer where you're, you're, you're not like acting. You're really listening to your partner and, and going off what they're giving you to inform what you say next. So, so then when you do add a script, a scripted line into it, that line is going to change if you do that scene the, the from the first time to the second time like that that the, how you say that line will change based on whatever your partner's giving you so that that uh i really loved that because it felt so, like such an organic way into performing and then and then also um around that time i was also discovering improv comedy and it was very much those two went hand in hand so yeah because it's all about being in the moment and stuff and were you um funny in class or did you kind of want to be serious actor mary like where serious. what was your journey in college yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. enjoyed the serious stuff i did and i and i uh and we didn't do much comedy it okay. was all very it was all very serious but but i did like doing uh, that's you, not to say i didn't like doing comedy you but. can't say anything good right now because walsh is going to be doing this thing where he takes off this I, yeah, sweater was, and uh, so i just can't wow. think we, we, that's for the youtube fans <laughs> i'm showing the guns right now <laughs> the flannel guns <laughs> But you know what I am, Tim? I'm authentic and I'm Meisner. I'm yeah, not that's like it. Phone, no. I'm not acting no, no, like no. a podcast host. I'm no. behaving as I feel and I'm yep. listening. Exactly. You exactly. can't teach that, Mary. And you really can't. And that's what I learned when I went to school for it was and that you actually can't. Yeah, you can't actually that. teach that. At what point for you did your focus change from uh, from theater or to improv? And also, uh, did you find that the Meisner training helped you when you actually then did have a script in your hand? Yes. 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 Okay. 
to answer your first question, which was improv to theater to improv. Theater to improv. Did it help you with a script? Did it help? Yes, yeah. and it, it did. It did help me with the script for sure. I think. I think mostly in that in that I was able to, you know, I, I would have a tendency to, to really get in my head sometimes with, with the script, wanting to do it right and wanting to, wanting to be, um, yeah, just play it, play it right. And then what I found with, with implementing that Meisner technique was there's a real freedom to it and a looseness and a, uh, and a sense of play that I just loved so much. And I think, you know, the focus at the the school that I went to or the theater the theater training that I had was very drama focused, but I was always a real goof growing up. Like I was a <laughs> As you can imagine, I was a goofball. I was like a real class clown and all that. So, so comedy was definitely in there, but I wanted to be a, a serious. I wanted to be an actress. Mm -hmm. Still do for anybody listening. Um, and She's crying for those uh, who aren't watching the video. Uh, Jonathan Meisner, if you're listening, you know, that's his first name, right? That's his yeah, kid. That's, no, his, that's son. his kid. Sandy was the old Sandy man. Sandy was the yeah. Sandy was the and and um and but I found that that coming from that theater training and then discovering improv, they actually, it actually really enhanced the improv. And I think because it, it gave me an openness to really emotionally commit to whatever was going on on stage. And so that inherently makes the comedy better when you're, when you're that, um, when you play it so real mm -hmm. and so, vulnerably and so uh, committedly, you, you really find the comedy in a, in a, in a different way. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of what I just took from that conversation is that maybe I just had uh, like not a great relationship and <laughs> that like how many people did like, did, how many people make did you out make with out anybody. with? No, your, I, no? Okay. Not, did you see it in class where there make out like people doing an exercise like, oh my God, they're gonna make out? Was that, no, but no. there was a lot of yelling. There was a lot of yelling. Like I, I in our, our acting, class room it was that whole building was later torn down the fine arts building riddled with asbestos is what oh no yeah. oh. i um, took one acting class at norman oh, oh you did yeah. oh, i wonder if you studied with no the guy i had with well, old johnny meisner when i went to get when i went <laughs> to get my grade because he it was the only acting class and he's like i'm going to tell you what to work on i'm going to tell you if you should keep it was kind of like his blessing he kind of let it up to be a big thing and then i went to the offices to get the grade on the wall and he'd been uh, put in prison for for, for uh, counterfeiting jail bonds for prisoners. What? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> he was this lovely, tall, g openly gay man, fantastic teacher, super sweet and encouraging oh and a great instructor. Gosh. And then when I went to like, okay, should I do this? Or, you know, I was thinking, like, should I do this as a career or should I stay with psychology? And I'm like, where's so-and-so? I can't even remember his name. And he's like, well, he's, uh, I don't know. And then I read in the school paper that he had been uh, arrested for like uh, forging or working with men in prison to forge bail bonds somehow and then sending them back like a whole. Whoa. Wait, wait did that have, wild. he was the performance or acting teacher? Yeah, he was a teacher. That, did that, did, was there any overlap of bail bonds and his <laughs> job at all? Like, so this was just like a side hustle that he had? I don't know how you fall into that. I, I don't Finding know out either. like he's, he was on crack the whole time, like or something. That's what it felt like. like have you, yeah. that guy? Shocking, yeah. yeah. Have you, as as your time like as you like kind of got out into the world and you met more openly gay people was there always a little part of you that was like are they know forging bail bonds uh, like they have a relationship <laughs> with men in prison i'm assuming men or some could be women too but yeah there's some money being made through bail bonds yeah but i always but assume specifically that. with openly gay <laughs> people yeah yeah it's like the that's weirdest, my prejudice yeah that's the weird prejudice <laughs> that prejudice. you have <laughs> Sure, you're a school teacher. Sure, that's sure. all you do. Sure. Yeah, okay. Let sure, me... you're an interior decorator. Sure, uh, you, sure you are. Sure. That's all you do. <laughs> yeah, And you drive a Tesla. Yeah, we know yeah, where that nice. money is coming from. Sure. So, uh, I think so, I'm saying teachers should make more money. I'm sure he wasn't and, making a ton. Well, and I yeah. agree with you there. Yeah. Uh, so, zero makeouts, but a lot of yelling. <gasps> zero makeouts, a lot of Just going to make a couple notes here in case maybe any exes yeah. are listening that there are oh, not a lot of makeouts, but <laughs> the yelling makes sense because that is yes. a very easily accessible emotion 
when you're starting out. Yeah. Yes, and it was also like you would things would just get really heated and we were encouraged to just go for it. So that room that I'm sure you took a class in was falling apart. There were it was like people would just like throw things against the wall and it was just yeah. very and also there there's a whole part of the training where you you do emotional prep and so you come into a room um I'm I having prepared one emotion, Matt having prepared another, and then we come together and he's affecting me and I'm affecting him and it always escalates in this really yeah. intense and crazy way. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I remember, I do remember uh, a guy that I went to college with eventually destroying a chair with a hammer that he was going to build, but it had something to do with his relationship with his father. Oh my gosh. So if anybody wants to know like what acting school is like, of course we yeah, were all like clutching our, our chests, like this is so powerful. And I'm sure people <laughs> walking by were like, Jesus fucking Christ. Well, we like, shared that building with the anthropology department. Oh, yeah. so, no. so people would be coming to their anthropology class and you'd see somebody like covered in fake blood, like crying <laughs> in the hallway. It was so silly. They have a good anthropology department too. They That's do. interesting, yeah. Uh, well, that guy got in trouble for uh, passing fake checks though. So like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a common hazard. I was going to say my one other highlight of my one acting class is in the middle of it, a guy from a real movie taught one of the classes. So he was in a movie called Altered States. If you, if you remember, I'm old, so William Hurt was in it, and it's a great movie. Blew my mind as a young man. And then when I was in college, the guy who played like a professor, and it probably like fourth lead, let's say, is mm -hmm. like William Hurt, his wife, and another woman, and then him. And it just, you know how like, people probably do it to you now. They see a famous person they can't believe. Why are you in a yogurt shop in Maine, Jonah? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I had that, exp I couldn't believe, like you're, f why would you be in Northern Illinois? And right. he was he was dating one of the teachers in the department, I think. And so he came in and taught oh. a guest class, but it was That's... really memorable and it was like, kind of the thing of like, oh, maybe, maybe I could be an act, like he's here. Yeah. He's a normal man. Yeah. Makes it feel accessible. Exactly. Yeah, like totally. touching the thing that you entertain the idea about. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. That was really a, a impactful. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So our, I got that from the class. Too. Our version of that was there was a guy, the guy who did the lighting design for the original Lion King Broadway. Like, yeah. Like, that's impressive. He, yeah. He came up and he was like a former student. He wasn't in the theater department, but somehow he got into lighting design. He came up and like we were doing a production of Suburbia. And he like was sat in and we were like, this is going to, this is our break. You know what I mean? Like we're doing it for the guy that did the lighting design for the Lion King. Like yes. I don't think that guy like has connections to the casting world. <laughs> but, but it is that thing of like when you don't have any access to it, somebody totally. who has touched it at all seems like a giant figure in that world. He did not like the lighting of our production oh, of Suburbia and J-Man who designed it. Um, we called him J-Man because he smoked a lot of joints and his name was Jeremy. Mm -hmm. uh, so J-Man had to do a lot of work over the weekend before the opening because he was oh. like, this is mud. This is <gasps> mud. All of it, it's mud. Oh, wow. Yeah, rough weekend for J-Man. Had to oh, rehang a lot of lights, yeah. Oh, no. Or he could look at it as a gift. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah. I'm getting this insight from a talented person. I'm going to yeah. use it. I don't yeah. think J-Man looked at it yeah. like that. No? No, I think he was just like, fuck, what the fuck, buddy? <laughs> 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 this fucking rules. This is mud. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so we are obviously talking about season six, episode seven, Blurb, which you have Sublurbia. read. Sublurbia. Sublur Sublurbia. Sublurbia. Um, written by Eric Bogosian. <laughs> um, and uh, Mara, but before we get into the actual episode, sure. uh, can you talk uh, to us about your road to being on Veep, how you yeah. got there, what was the process was like yeah. uh, from your from your side? Yes, well, uh, I was a massive fan of the show and of you both. Um, funniest show on television. You said that, but you, true you to said this you day. both, but you gestured to Matt, and so for the people well, no, my not hand, listening. My hand, well, I had a hand under the table. That, that like, I had a hand like, under the table. No, I did, I did, and it's sort of like, yeah. I, like went I mean, gun to your head if you had to give one Oscar. <laughs> Say there's only one Oscar oh, left there's on only the one? planet <laughs> for comedy. Oh my God, I'm getting it. I'm giving <laughs> oh, it to that's myself. Fun. That's, oh, you all tricked me. <laughs> all right, moving on. Um, <laughs> but, but this, so I got this audition, um, and it was, I remember this, it was the day after 
the 2016 election. And so it was the day directly after. And I remember going to the casting office and in the waiting room, it was filled with um, brunette comedians. <laughs> and we were all just like, some of us were crying. Some of us, yeah. were, you know, it was, we were all sort of shell shocked from what had just happened the night yeah. before. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we, it was Dorian Frankel who was, who was casting mm -hmm. it at the time. Um, and so I, lo I was so excited also that this character was a, a love interest for Jonah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Because we had, how well did we know each other at that point? Now it feels like we've known each other Yes, for a very yeah, long, a time. long time. We were pretty close at that. Yeah, point, I, I knew I knew exactly. you well. I felt very comfortable with you. Yeah, I, I feel like I knew you just from around the comedy scene, okay. from shows and and stuff like that. Like I feel like on the indie improv circuit, maybe a little bit. Would but... we have done you? Uh, oh, for, if you didn't oh, know, right, the show's not funny. Mary yeah. did a show that was my favorite improv show in town, which with was Casey, right? Yeah, yeah. With Casey it's and called Luca. This yeah. Show's yeah. Not Funny. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was always so great. I guess in like a sort of misery way of exactly like not that was the but inspiration. They always yeah. ended up being so fun and so funny. Yes. So I think we probably had done one or two of those. That's right. Yeah, and that yeah, so that that show was all about taking the pressure off to be funny and just commit to whatever the scene is, and it always ends up being being very fun and entertaining. Um, but yes, you had you had done a few of those, and then uh, so I was really excited for the part and um, went in, did the audition. Uh, Dorian gave me some notes, and then I remember feeling like uh, after, and she gave me great notes, and then I I did it again. But I remember thinking when I was leaving, I was like, Ugh, I did not do well <laughs> I was sort of like oh man I feel like I didn't I didn't give her what she was asking for um and so you know I was really I was really bummed because it was such a huge opportunity to get to audition for this show and then uh and then I kind of went on as we all do you just gotta let them go <laughs> and uh, it sounds like you've uh, really internalized that and it's did like you cut up your sofa be honest did you go home and just shred a piece of furniture you weren't that easy going about no it. no no i mean i did you know look at myself in the mirror for a few hours and say i hate you but but um but it wasn't for a long time um but then a few days later i uh got the call back which was going to be in front of Julia and David, and it was going to be with you, mm -hmm. which I was very excited about. Um, and uh, and yeah, I was so nervous for it, but I I got there, and I remember seeing a few other um, actors who were going in before me, and then I just went in, and it was you made me so comfortable, and I knew we'd have fun, and we did. You just made it such a fun audition experience, and. Obviously, Julia is, um, she's an icon. And yeah. so really wanted to do well in front of her as well and in front of Dave, of course. And um, and yeah, you just, you, I, I was so grateful to you because you made that possible. You, you were so, you were so encouraging and it was so easy to play with you. And yeah, I just, yeah, you that made is, it a very good experience. That's great to hear. Thank you. I will say that was the first time I had ever been in like a chemistry read like oh, anybody really? that had been cast oh. I guess opposite me or a part of the show I was always usually just meeting them on set but that was because right, was we were going to be spending read. a bunch right. of time together right. they were like okay well let's see how they interact and I remember yeah. everybody else that came through it was like it I was, t I mean, I had been on the show at this point for what, four and a half years, and even I was still kind of nervous to be in the room. I was still kind of like, really? I hope I do a good job in here. It's very, very it's weird. It's so funny to hear you say that. Wow. But I do remember everybody that came in was great. Some people were more nervous than others. Yeah. Everybody had a different read on it. Like everybody, yeah. everybody was different from one another. That's but cool. I do remember, I do really think that that history that we had leading up to that point helped. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, probably if I was nervous and then you came in and I felt more relaxed, they probably noticed that. And if I made right. you more relaxed, they probably noticed that. But it really was like, and there were some people I think that were maybe at that point more established Definitely. or had been on yes. things. But I just, I do remember that 
after you left, everybody was like, oh yeah, it's pretty clear it's Mary. Like it Aww. was like, and it was just because it was like, oh, there was like an ease yeah. between them that even if like, I don't think I did every scene right, or even if you weren't like note perfect, it was like the ease that we yes, had there yes. really did help. Totally, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice to hear, yeah. Um, I'm glad you felt it too, because it was, it definitely was no, like, No, no, oh. definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, and they liked improvisers, because they would always say, who's oh, right. funny at UCB? Oh, right. They really did want people who could push it a little. And like, I'm sure in that audition, you improvised a little, right? I got to yeah, believe. We did. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And so I think you were built for the show, too. Like yeah. your, your ability to like run with it and, and go off of him. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. It was such a blast. Uh, even again, I'll say like, we can kind of go uh, because you were in a bunch of episodes. If you remember moments from any of the other ones, please bring them up that oh, you sure. liked or you had a really great time with. But I remember that I think the, the first scene that we ever did together was like weirdly one of the scenes that I feel like worked in the table read, but it was that giant party scene yes. where I was like trying to eat the- Yes, that's right. The, the meatball. The meatballs. And it was one of those ones where it was like, okay, like turn the cameras off, everybody sit down. Dave got like all the I writers. I remember this. Dave got, oh my yeah. Gosh. He got yes. like all the writers from the writer's room who were like off working on scripts. He, he did like an all call, like everybody get here. I, we don't know why this scene isn't working with like all these different moving yeah. parts. We have to like kind of retool it. And yeah. what did they figure out on the other side of that? Do you remember any significant change by chance? Oh, God, if I had God, done they streamlined it. it? <laughs> That's okay. If I had I'm done my curious. job and gone back, I might have been able to find the original one and compare oh, it to. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think it was, I think it was, like, it kind of comes off of, I remember, like, our, like, our initial, like, attraction or whatever mm -hmm. was, I think, basically just because I was tall, but that also, you were like, oh, good genes for having tall children. But that, like, I, like, I kind of went hard at you, like, of, like, yeah. oh, Shawnee or whatever is your name is, like, yeah. nobody controls me. Yeah. And that was, it was, I think it was the lead up to that, that, okay. like, whatever was happening previous, it mm -hmm. kind of needed to end up there. And, and so was in the story, I know work. she never, like Shawnee never went on a date with Jonah. Jonah had these no. setup dates. But in the first scene, which is this party scene, had you already been set up or it was like a meet cute? It was, it was the first time I was meet. <laughs> I mean, it, well, it, in, the, in the cinematic language yeah, totally. of the meet cute. No, no, no. I mean, I'm just, it's funny to call it because it kind of is a meet okay. cute, but it is like the fun house mirror version of yes. two awful people meeting cute. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? That's why yeah. I laugh. Yes, definitely. And I, I think Shawnee saw like, oh, this is someone I can control, manipulate. And like, yes. this is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. But I do remember a thing that was cut that night that we were supposed to film was was us making out. Yes, that there was and like. I was like, oh yeah, they, I guess they, I guess there's no, I, but I, you know, I sort of was like, oh, I, I see the. Tim was like, let's do Meisner, Mary. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> let's do Meisner. <laughs> I have a quitch for a scene. <laughs> 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 but it wasn't it wasn't like like the it felt like what was more organic to this couple especially for for on Shawnee's end was like the sex was super perfunctory and like yeah. like uh, totally utilitarian and functional and yeah. there was no but that make out implied that there was passion or there was like some sort Romance. of heat yes. which yeah. I don't think there ever was. I remember yeah. that I do remember from that scene at one point where it was supposed to be like you throwing me up against a wall <laughs> And then yes. at some point stopping the make out to be like, how tall are you? And I right. say like six foot five. And you're like, OK, like this can continue. And then, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, so it just kind of cuts a couple scenes later to we have had sex in my office and That's I'm right. still in bed. But then you're like fully dressed and you're like done for the day. Yeah. And I think there was something about like I asked, like, was it weird that I had like only one testicle and you were like that was fine the weirdness was like your hips <laughs> or in the scene in the scene <laughs> but when you're in the i forgot about yeah. that that's so funny when 
I'm jumping ahead to when Shawnee leaves you. You're in a hospital bed. I thought that's when you lost your testicle. No, that's when he's getting circumcised. That's when I'm because, getting adult because, circumcised. Because and he's, it's already he converted gone? to Judaism for me for, to marry yeah. And he'd already done it, right? Yes. That's it was post-surgery? Like post, post-op. Because Peter McNichol laughs. She like, you ditch him. <laughs> yes. And then he cracks up so hard because he loves when Jonah gets kicked. Yeah. <laughs> so you left him... For what reason? I don't even remember. I left him because he wasn't going to get that that Peter McNichol was coming in with some information about your position or your. Oh, was Ezra going to replace you at that point? Possibly so. Yes, yes. And I think Shawnee was like, oh, then I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And Uh, I do. (laughs) You are still recovering from the operation. Like, still in the bed. Like, I've just just woken up. (laughs) Yeah. Post surgery. Yeah. And, And very quickly. I do remember that. I do remember there were moments in that scene with Peter McNichol where I was like, am I watching and an, like a character respond to Peter McNichol? But there were, or am I watching Mary Holland realize just how insane this oh man my God. is? A little bit of both. I th- or maybe it was mostly the latter. Like it was, it was truly, uh, it was it, it, like a force to behold. Yes. It was something else. And then also being, I think I remember Dave saying like, welcome to Veep Mary, because there were there were insults that were specifically written about <laughs> about me that mm-hmm. that that uh, that he said. And they were so shocking. <laughs> and so he says them when you're in the room, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so so funny like the, the the equivalent is i remember i did this this is a separate thing but i did a funny or die sketch <laughs> that uh went up on youtube <laughs> and i did go ahead and read those comments and one of them said is that bill Hader?" And it, oh, <laughs> oh my god but it, it was the same thing where it made me like i recognized it being uh I guess an insult, but also it was funny. Like it, it did make me laugh. So it was the same thing with, with this, where it, it was. I feel like that's so true with the the Veep writing and what stood out to me, especially that night at the party where it was all hands on deck and the whole, um, all the writers came together. It in my experience of it was, oh, this this whole team, the writers, the actors, everyone here is so committed to making this the funniest it can possibly be. Like a fine joke is not enough. Mm -hmm. And I admired that, so I was blown away by that dedication to it. And in that moment with with Peter McNichol, it was like truly shocking. I I do remember, (laughs) I mean, I think it was, that was, I just remember him saying something that was about you specifically and your reaction from my memory was, Oh my God! Like, like this thing yes. of like, I, I like, oh my God! You can't just say that to another human. And when, but like, the line is almost bad enough. But like, Peter McNichol then selling it is like the, the hip comment. Amazing. I remember. I think at one point, my mom and my dad. We've talked about this before. My mom, and my dad, like, watch and listen to every episode of this. Uh-huh. And I think when I was in like the my si- mom and dad. Hi guys. Hi. Uh, I was in like the seventh grade <laughs> that we keep. Wait, wait, one more time. Oh, Aaron. Okay, we're, I'm gonna. Oh shit! Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, okay. <laughs> we never got the timing right okay. on that. <laughs> I think in like the seventh grade, my mom bought me because whatever. I would grow out of pants in like two and a half weeks, so she just bought me like six pairs of cheap pants, and I think they might have been women's pants. And I'm already like a oh, lower yeah. body prominent guy as it is, and I think these pants kind of accentuated that. Oh. And so then everybody started calling me like hip related nicknames, and so I, I think when. When Shawnee says the line about like, no, it was your hips. Like there was some deep, oh, deep hurt yeah. in that one yeah. that I like couldn't bring up at the time because like whatever. Yeah. I mean, like it's a funny it's line. It's not personal. I mean, it's not no, personal. but it, it, he called me the fourth horse face of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about hitting where it hurts. <laughs> like, and that's an Aaron favorite. I think uh, we got another one. Yeah, it's a big laugh. All right, right. I just—I also remember that's a good that's a insult. Laugh. Did yeah, they run so a bunch? Funny. I bet they ran a few, right? They probably tried yeah, a few a different few. versions. there were a few. There were yeah. a few. Yeah. Yeah. They and also, I remember that was when Dave was like, "Welcome to me." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was also. I remember. I think it's in the cut. Is definitely like, uh, "Excuse me, Miss Trans." Yeah, that's right. Rather than <laughs> Miss right. Tans. That's right. <laughs> I off of that. Um, I. Uh, because uh, we're probably only two or three minutes into this episode, uh, but obviously we're talking about 
uh, blurb. Season, yeah, blurb. Season six. The unveiling of the portrait. The unveiling All of this the portrait. is lead up to the unveiling yes. of yes. Selena's portrait and the shutdown. That, just <laughs> off of what you said of like a joke, a, a fine joke is not good enough. Mm -hmm. I feel like right around this point, like this episode, and I, I and again, we're kind of going out of order, so it may have happened before this, but this is one of those ones where I noticed that every single line, even if it was expositional, at some point became a funny joke. Yeah. And, oh, and I felt like this so episode funny. had a lot of that, of just like a frenetic energy. This is a really good episode. It, it is. So I mean, good. we're in the tank for the show, obviously. We yes. love the show. <laughs> sure. And season six on the internet has taken some rap because it is a departure from Selena being in politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of the fans don't consider it you know, one of the better seasons, but this is a great episode. I really agree with you and it's uh, totally agree. It's very efficient and doesn't stop with like jokes. Oh and my gosh, the jokes. And and like even one like right the off the other. bat, of like the first three notes that I had over like the 200 most important people in Washington and Mike, uh, <laughs> Sam doing the thing about that's a brain twister when it's like we need a final list by the day after yesterday, which is today. Oh, wow. That's a brain twister. Yeah. <laughs> and then this moment where the guy comes in, the, the publisher guy comes in. Oh, yes. And is like, do you have any buy ho white tip? And Tony's like. I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> he has been waiting for someone to ask yes. him, for Selena to ask him <sighs> for this incredibly specific tea. Oh my God. And he has it. And Tony's reaction to that, I absolutely fucking love. Me too. Yeah. I, and I feel like there are a lot of examples of that where, like, even in this episode specifically, that moment of it's a joke that, yes, comes out of nowhere. But it, it is so character driven yeah. in a weird way that we get this big insight into Tony. Yeah. By his reaction to it. So we get like that wouldn't like that. I don't know. In some other show, it might have been cut for economy's sake. But that like that by ho white tip thing. Yeah. It's is so just, revealing. It's about so Tony. revealing yeah. about Tony. And it has nothing to do with that scene. Like the scene operates just as well as it would have. If not, if yeah. it wasn't in there, but it just adds so much to Tony. Yes, and his reactions, I, I was really noting that in this episode, his reactions to everything, how how tuned in he is to Selena. Like like when um, um, uh, Hugh Laurie's character goes on the talk show and scoops her with the, the, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the fact that they had sex in the White House green room or whatever, his rea he, he was so... Um, appalled and mm -hmm. just horrified by it, more so than Selena even yes. in that moment. It's just it's so it's such brilliant acting. He, I, uh, there were a bunch of uh, like I watched some of the gag reels recently, and one thing that I saw was like this like this thing that we talked about before is that eventually they would just write in scripts like Tony makes a noise or Gary they would say Gary Gary makes a noise. And there are moments in these gag reels where it is clearly like a Gary makes a noise moment, and like and Julia can't complete the scene <laughs> because he keeps going like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, and then like every different variations of it, she's like, you got you, you don't don't you gotta stop. <laughs> there is a really I really love. There's a moment at the very end of the episode, uh, uh, where he's like Gary Oking who this person is that's coming in and yeah. he's like oh this is Montez's Gary me. and yeah. he's like and he like leans over to Gary Oki not exactly I have an uh, I have a, a degree law degree oh, right, and I've right, served right. two right. tours so in Afghanistan funny. but he Gary Oki's to get yeah. in yeah, there yeah, I mean yeah, it yeah. was oh, it's fucking incredible yeah that was a great <laughs> job we should have looked that guy's name up he was wonderful yeah that's a really wonderful moment um just going by the internet the insult of the episode according to the internet okay uh, Alethiel, is that her name or the pill you take to fuck her? Yes. Oh, yeah, that That's was a good. really that was really good. Tight insult. Very. Funny. That's a great one. That scene, <laughs> the 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 play on the two of like you know playing off of yes. the intensity of them fucking in congressional yes. ball, 
uh, at the end of last season into like three moments. It's it was like, cool. It's so cool. And I well, she goes it. back yes. in. Yeah. She goes back That's in. That's so oh. good. Well, she basically so says, good. I love you. Does I mean, yeah. in my interpretation, yes. she confesses. Or was it because I introduced the bill because I had a crush on you? Or was it because I was holding your hand I know the way in she Los does. Angeles? And I'm like, oh my God, he's holding my hand. Yes. She's kind of saying it like a question, but I think she, all me- she meant it all, obviously, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So she confesses and then the wife comes in before they can... Resolve it. It's like she, a really well structured moment. Yeah. It's beautiful. And and there is that moment where where Alethea says, "I voted for you," and she goes, "Well, that didn't matter." Did yeah, it? yeah, like yeah. didn't help. Didn't yeah. help. Yeah, there is like that is maybe a rare moment where you think maybe when when she goes to talk to Hugh about, "Hey, I'm gonna like I'm letting you know I'm gonna talk about." the fact that we had sex in my book. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God, this well, this all goes back to the fact that she has to rewrite the book because oh, right. to make it sexier. To make it sexier and to make it about the presidency because the guy was like, you know, you can, yeah, this book is great, but if you want to do this, then we need the advance back. And Mike's like, there was an advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so apparently this was based on <laughs> that Dave, didn't Dave tell us that this was based off of Bill Clinton? Oh, like, really? I think he got a book deal. Or the Rolling Stones. Oh, oh, maybe one of them. One of them got a book, and I think Mick didn't remember anything, and he needed. No, that was that's the because diary. of that. Okay, the that's diary. because of the diary. Okay, so then maybe Clinton. The yeah. Clinton was the one who like wanted to write his presidential biography in like three different stages, and like you wouldn't get to the White House till the third one, oh and the people gosh. were like, "No, we really just want the one about how you were the president. Like, right. we don't really care about the whole Arkansas thing." Right. Uh, but in that scene where she goes to be like the good person and let him know, there are moments in that where where you kind of think that she is being real with him of like, oh, yeah. like, uh, why did I why did I fuck the last gentleman in D.C.? And it's not and right after right after that scene's over. It's like, oh, no, we're still absolutely going to use it. Mm-hmm. So she has ways of making you think that the thing she says is the truth when it's not but i do agree i uh, my read of that moment when it's like he's holding my hand and her reactions after the fact yes seems like a rare moment or when i had my nervous breakdown i thought about you all the time yeah Yeah. it felt very real i think as structured it probably meant that yeah yeah Yeah. and it does then make sense how mad she is at fucking alethea when she comes in (laughs) yes yeah also, when that moment, I was so struck by Julie's performance in that moment when she was like, he's holding my hand. It was so, like, girlish and yeah, so vulnerable. vulnerable. Yeah. And, and soft in this way yeah. you never see yeah. Selena. So it was, it was so cool to... Yeah, and I, and I always like, because I think we've talked about on the show, is that these characters have codified games like Gary Oki after like episode two mm-hmm. was a quality that they, they knew they could revisit for comic gold basically. Mm-hmm. And like that Selena Tom thing is, is a comic game essentially like you yell, yell, yell and you're this close and everybody knows, holy shit, they're going to fuck. So we're revisiting this game, but they do it. So the writers do it so well that it's story driven yeah. and it's not just like someone coming in and saying their catchphrase, you know, like yeah. that's, that's what I always marvel at with the show with the writing is that like yes they all have comic games mike's always a step behind richard similarly a step behind but he has he celebrates his flaws uh-huh. in, in the best way and jonah just is dumb and dumber and like yeah but like it's confidently th- angrily wrong yeah is sort of the general thing <laughs> yeah but I, I always appreciate how it's all just sewn in in a, in a way that story keeps moving and it's not just like a catchphrase it's not yeah. like here's the joke line yeah. you know right and, and that, there's such an emotional undercurrent yeah to it. it's not yeah. just the game for a game's sake yeah and uh, truth be told, I'm in the tank for the show, so I can't be an objective, you know. That's it would right. be funny Critic. if you were like, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> the writing, yikes. Yikes. Ooh. Talk about phoning it in, guys. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> paycheck. I get it. You just want a paycheck. All right. This, uh, Dave has always been, I think this is probably something that we wouldn't have uh tackled if dave hadn't taken over the show mm. but the the tans family then oh, yeah. leading to like a lot of scenes about judaism yes. i think it's probably something we wouldn't have tackled but you all oh, dave loved to poke at his jewish oh, or God. the jews uh i loved how you wore your yarmulke, yarmulke that was so yeah. dumb like it was like a <laughs> giant cone a giant, on your head and it's like kind of 
on incorrectly and the fucking I mean it's just a great <laughs> joke I'm mean, like this stupid hat is yes, too big for yes, my head so you know like funny. yarmulke yeah. <laughs> it's like fine this stupid <laughs> hat is too big for my yarmulke pretty my yarmulke <laughs> is there a Jew place for dogs that's a great is there a Jew line? place for dogs that was a great one I feel like look I don't want to toot my own horn I feel like maybe that one was mine I love it oh yeah maybe. every once in a while I feel you'll, you'll while. get one in there I think I got one in there yeah. like look if a writer wants to text me <laughs> angrily I will absolutely correct this sure. on the next show I also like the exchange with Catherine when Selena's like does anyone really want to look at two average looking lesbians and <laughs> Mike's like I don't mind them and Tony Tony watches me and goes Ugh. Like, he just makes a Gary noise like Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's just like quick, quick, quick. Yes. There are really so, good. there are a, of that storyline of her being pregnant, I do uh I mean just little moments of like of like Sam being like this will be my first human birth or my yes. first live human birth. <laughs> right. right. And Mike thinks that Selena had sex with Kent and she's like, My snatch is not a data port. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just it's it's so shocking. Yeah. It's like like the jokes are just they surprise you every time I I marvel at them like the, these writers are just unbelievable this and performers too and the improvisers like Tim and obviously, obviously. Tim, I mean singly. I think 80% of the show was improvised by Tim Simons yes that's my guess okay yeah. even the and lines you didn't know. say you were probably like hey say this yeah I was like always whispering lines to me like, hey, <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. Say, say this you say did this. you did and I really didn't love it <laughs> um. golfers you know PXG is on a mission to create the most high-quality, high-performance golf clubs in the game. Well, they're bringing the same passion for excellence to their new line of apparel. And I got to say, they have nailed it. They nailed it. They flushed it. They hit it straight down the center. It is made. Sure, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. <laughs> made with premium materials and technology designed for peak performance, these confidence-inspiring looks invite all-day play, taking you seamlessly from the course to the office to a night on the town. Yeah. Golf trips to romantic getaways. These dynamic pieces will give you versatility, and you'll stand out in stylish fashion. Uh, PXG Apparel has something for everybody. They got pants, polos, sweaters, hats, quarter zips. If you want to be really cool, you can say Q-zips, joggers, jackets, skirts, everything you could want. While she, uh, I went out and played uh, the other day, wore my PXG shirt. It was incredible. Uh, stayed cool on a hot day. Uh, it worked out great. Yeah, I thought I was the only VIP who got a nice shirt from them, but I guess they like you too. Uh, uh, that's cool. We're going to have to talk about that uh, off camera uh, about right. yeah. where we we'll think about what the power dynamics are here. Uh, so you can elevate your style game on and off the course with the PXG Spring Summer 2024 collection. So head over to pxg.com slash command and use code command at checkout and you'll save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash command code command to save 10% on apparel. Okay, write it down. I'm not going to say it again. PXG.com slash command code command. And that's easy to remember because the name of our podcast is second in command. So it's like they planned that. Well, now you're confusing them because you're adding second in and they don't need to type anything other than command. <laughs> But no, no, no. Do happens. it this way, Mary. No, no, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, he the director told me to do it this way. <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah. going to. Okay, he did. Um, <laughs> I I want to throw out the, uh, uh, when they're talking about the gender of their child. Yes, the porky pig. The bi-curious porky pig. Oh God. And uh, this is a child, not a Brooklyn-based artisanal chocolate <laughs> yes. bar. Yeah. And those two are so fun. Marjorie and... and uh, and oh, I keep saying Sarah. Catherine. Yeah, yeah, Catherine. Yeah, they're the way they just annoy Selena is so funny. By being so genuine yes, and so and human so earnest in their beliefs. And yeah. thoughtful. Yeah. They're <laughs> very funny. Hmm. Uh, I will read Jonah shall henceforth be known. Every week they would say what Jonah's best insult was. Uh -huh. oh. And Jonah shall henceforth be known from the internet. Uh, like Herman Munster's brother who liked to molest that pudgy werewolf kid. Also played by Fred McMurray. Or Fred, <laughs> uh, Fred Gwynn. <laughs> Kent added it. There are two... Season one, episode nine. Yeah, <laughs> season one, episode nine. There are two moments in this sh in this episode where Kent does like the, the... Where Kent Davidson can be the Christmas tree. You can hang anything on him and it works. Like when... Yeah. Did we go 
to the paella dinner together? Yes. Okay, so that yes. was you and I. Yes. Uh, like when he all of a sudden knows American Sign Language. Yes, that's right. I, like, yes. I, so there were two and in there. He, <laughs> that's right. I remember. I know what you're going to say. Kent's yes. bringing his high line. His high line <laughs> in instructor. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Kent would be good at high life. Yeah, absolutely. You believe it immediately. And you believe it immediately that he would know, ex be that big of a fan of the Munsters. And that he would know the gender of the baby. Yes, Cause, that cause was such would, a great. He left the scene was like, it's a boy. It's like, a boy. And, and their disappointment is great. Because they know he's right. Yeah. They yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that was great. Uh, this is kind of a throwaway line from Kent, but it's like another example of why Gary Cole is so great in this show was the uh, uh, you're going to vote yes despite clear uh, but despite clear evidence of cocaine use and reckless boating. Yeah, <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like, Those guys know how yeah, to party. Cocaine, <laughs> boats, got it. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Compliment of the episode, Selena says about Montez. Uh, Oh, wow, she looks awesome. I'd give my left tit for those tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's so simple, but solid. Um, I, oh, I, the, I, the explosive revelations that come out. Mm. Um, I love this whole thing about how this is a good example of what Dave was talking about. Uh, we did like a transitional episode between seasons five and season six about what was going to change in the post presidency, and he talked about mm. how having how having Dan as the host of this show allowed him to be a part of the media machine that might break stories. Oh, And so yeah. you see that He literally yeah. turns on Tom James' that's announcement. Right. Yes. That's right. And oh, that, that's so smart. That mm. his revelations, he's like, you know, the shocking and, uh, you know, and spicy revelations in Tom James's book, Investing with a Conscience. Like yeah. the book is about how to invest with a conscience, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's <laughs> putting these blurbs in there. And then that leads to the like Vanity Fair reached out, but I thought they were just like, Mike, why weren't you on top so of this? Funny. They reached out, but I thought they <laughs> were just- my subscription. Your, your, your prescription. prescription. Your prescription. <laughs> subscription. She fucking I, You know what I, you? and I thought in that moment, I was like, why do, why doesn't she why hasn't she fired Mike? Because he's not good at his job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think cuz she can manipulate him as she needs. Yeah, and she yeah, has yeah. I think she has her flaw might be familiarity like the devil you know. Like I don't yes. want people in my camp who already know my secrets. I don't want to introduce new people to my yeah. secrets. That kind of like And they're also devoted to her. Yeah, and, and she can exploit them. Yes. She right. knows how to manipulate them and, and not get like Mike's not getting paid and Gary will do anything. Yes. Yeah. Like everyone it's around her and her. you know, it's and I was gonna point out Wonderful uh, appearance by Darcy Carden. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, oh that, I yes. love that and that's joke. A, <laughs> Why are women always checking, checking in? Yes. on Are you okay, another. Candy? It First Montez so and then Darcy comes funny. in. Funny. Are you okay, President Are Montez? you okay, Madam President? Are you okay, like, Madam President? God, why are women always checking in on one another when I'm talking? It's hilarious. <laughs> it's such a funny joke. I uh, oh god damn, I fucking love that. And I and Darcy, I mean Darcy is like one of those like if you know Darcy, she is like one of the funniest people oh, alive. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I so just funny. like they're just all of these episodes are so packed. I would have loved to have seen Darcy somehow come come back or be a larger part i know it was like because there does was, she come back at all i wonder I'm i not, thought i remember yeah. her being in in because she seems more. like a chief of no candy's chief of staff candy's but she feels like high up in uh, yeah. montez's uh fiesta yeah i think at this point uh, <laughs> i think at this point a good place would have been going and morgan sackett our producer was also the producer morgan directed oh this. sure he that directed the director, this episode. Yeah, Morgan directed Oh, this there one. you go. He was oh, probably, yeah. probably just like, hey, Darcy, come on over here. Do you want to be on the show? Yeah, from uh, yeah. Good Place. Yeah, from Good yeah. Place. I love that Gary's wearing makeup. That's mm -hmm. kind of a throwaway. <sighs> but someone's like, Gary, you wear makeup. And then Amy's behind going, mm -hmm. he yeah, is. He, he denied it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and Furlong is unbelievably funny. Oh, gosh. oh I think Will too. says, why is that, Will? Because I'm trapped in a cycle of abuse. Yeah, because <laughs> you have self-respect and... Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, uh, Furlong has speaking of insults that are like really will make it hurt. Yeah, I uh, what he says something to the effect of, I uh, maybe you didn't hear this over the sounds of you biting on James Bond's cable car yeah. wire. Are you a James Bond 
film watcher. Do you I know have this seen reference? James Bond films. I don't know this reference. I Richard want... somebody was the actor. Yes. He, he played Jawbreaker? I think he played the Jaws? character. I think the character's name was Jaws. Jaws. Do you yeah. remember in Happy Gilmore, the guy who like is a huge fan of Happy Gilmore? And who yeah. Played, oh, yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. So he played like a he henchman. The, the nail in he has the nail in his head. He has the nail in his head. He played a henchman in a lot of the James Bond movies uh -huh. who had like metal teeth and he would like bite oh, through yeah. these giant wires. But he was like basically like a giant of a man with insane teeth who would I bite see. through so that, thick wires. And that hurt. Man, that one hurt a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that hurt. You know what? What are you going to do? Maybe we just had you on to talk that. about. Is there anything else that you need to talk about while you're Yeah, here? actually, yeah. What hurt now that you, you mention it, <laughs> like in my life, I can yeah. tell, you, tell you anything. You just want the show. Um, uh, uh, start with the show, and then we'll see where it goes. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I know. That's... Uh, that one... I see that. That does hurt. That one was rough. Yeah. Uh, this also uh, includes a moment, the Labradoodle Sticky Licky, uh, oh, when God. I yeah. rub... Nelson says, honey. Yeah. Rub a honey on He's my like, Labradoodle's on his, penis, yeah. and I give, give him, him a, a sticky, sticky licky, which Ugh. I do feel like is revealing in Nelson. In that, I feel like the normal way is that you put honey on your dick, and the dog licks it off. The you. normal way. The normal way. What? The normal way that everybody's <laughs> done. Yeah, that you would no. shame someone with. Yeah. I think, or you put peanut butter on your, your penis. Your dick, right. and, like, and you let the, the dog way. give you a blowjob or yeah. whatever. Yeah. knowing he gives the dog. Yeah. This is like sophomore. So 101. he's putting the honey on the dick of the dog. That's right. So that, which <laughs> I guess just implies a human choice was made at every mm -hmm. moment. It wasn't just like... Like uh, like animal. lizard brain, yes, animal yes. brain. It smells yeah, sweet. Pretty. I need to lick it. I love that when she sees the uh, like the staff. Like you know, her beautiful day is gonna be completely fucked. All like you know, yes. uh, uh, she sees the staff. She does not remember their names, but they're so excited to see her. But what she does remember, she's like, I know she's the one that put my sweater in the dryer. And Gary Oki's he, Gary says friend friend whispers to say friend like. If you don't know the name. And I love the theme which comes through the season, which Dave actually talked about, like the morning show. Dave was so enamored with that world, like he was ready to do a whole show about a morning show. Oh, I and I think it. he even yeah. like pitched it to HBO at some point and uh, I don't think they were to have a, a full spin off yeah. of yeah. And he probably had too much on his plate, so they were probably like, Dave, just just fix just make yeah. keep making this one good. We <laughs> just, don't want to make you too busy and then lose right. your focus. But every t every much like monkeys, every sign off of that daily show or that morning show in our V world, I love. Like they say, like, uh, are we doing our laundry wrong? Japanese efficiency experts say no. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or it's like, Buzzy, our weatherman, is going to be at the most interesting place telling us the weather, the beach. <laughs> like they never quite <laughs> deliver. And I just, I could watch those mundane sort yes. of satires of how mundane, because I always remember like news shows. In Chicago, like, is your refrigerator killing you? Stick yes. around. Stick, like, yes. What? Exactly. Like, what? <laughs> there was, I love that stuff. I do so love funny. that also, that sub storyline of the fact that Brie, Ramachandran, and Dan yes, are, are fucking, are actually sense. fucking, but they have no chemistry. Ugh. And Paul's reaction at the very end when they keep missing the hands, like that <laughs> beat of like, uh, and he's just like, ugh. He's yeah. so funny in this, too. And the the furlong insult of Congressman Girardi when you all come in and vote no against uh, saving the budget, he oh. says, I bet it would take a whole roll of duct tape to s strap down that <laughs> hog of a cock. Yeah. And that's how you're like, like, we're not. He <laughs> says that Jeff to Jessica Chaffin. Yes. yes. Yeah. Like, and she's like, I'm here. Watch me whip it watch out. Watch me yeah. whip it out. Yeah. So there, I, this is a, that storyline of Jonah shutting down the house yeah is the kind of chaos that your dad is yeah. looking for yeah and is like very clear about like yeah the only things like but also a theme like season one had a government shutdown that's like a perennial story for this yes. show and it's unfortunately con like we talk about like these episodes are still relevant because it's there's going to be another oh debate gosh, about fucking funding the government like why is that a thing and there know. but i think the difference between the one in the first season and the one in this season is that 
it shows you the length of the how things had changed. Yeah. And honestly, it has now even taken on a new form. And I think what I would say is in the first one, it was like, OK, well, people are arguing and it's a little bit crazy, yeah. but it's not too bad. And when this one happens, it's a little bit more reactionary of like, oh, OK, like the lunatics are in charge of the asylum. Mm -hmm. The chaos is what we want mm -hmm. because it just because chaos benefits oh, yeah. Furlong and Marwood are the old breed and they're yes. like having fake debates yes. and then Furlong says alright I'll give you this right, what do you give me right, so they're right. ready to settle and then the new breed is all the what are you called cherry choppers the, the, the Jeffersons the Jeffersons thank you so him coming in and doing this in a way is something that at the time would have seemed insane but now just in the oh, last yeah. three months with like goes. Like that that is a very Gatesian thing to do. Like yeah. like Matt Gates was not around. But or he, shutting down all military totally. appointments shutting for down abortion. All military appointments over abortion yeah. and or like ousting your own speaker because he made a deal Concession. on the debt ceiling yeah. and then throwing Congress into chaos for a month to get a speaker who then just makes the exact same concession. Mm -hmm. Like there is no thought. There is no game of it's just like the the shortest term like dopamine hit of in the moment and then it's people trying to act like it was something else like you can see in a way Matt Gates making that speech yeah. at the end oh absolutely like I'm sorry like I'm on the steps of the yeah 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 uh, interfering on clocks and watches do you have any questions one of my favorite moments from that is you stepping in right after I say that to say <laughs> the, you, the congressman will not be taking <laughs> questions right. yes yeah I, and I do, and like Shawnee's, the the way she like stands so proud next to him. Like, yeah. This is exactly what the tans yes. want. But that's um, like a cliched moment, like the woman standing by the politician. Right. Like you played that really well, like your pride and like, I, I agree with everything you said, yes. but you instantly like <laughs> shut him up and put the hand. Yes. He won't be saying that. Like, it's funny. It's you really are funny. as competent yeah. in your evil as Jonah is incompetent in his. Yeah, right. Like it really is just like he didn't get invited to a thing that's right. all it it's is it's so juvenile and yes immature. but shawnee's so yeah. like your dad is hilariously terrible like he is yeah. shameless mm -hmm. he makes evil. money off of private prisons yeah, yes evil. and he's a puppet master in congress like he just wants money and the, and he's so shameless and shawnee's so much more likable but she's not far from the tree oh yes. my god but yeah you kind of fooled me at least a little bit. Like you're likable for a long time, I think. Oh, that's nice. I think. I don't know. I that's my have, take. <laughs> I, I think it. this might be one of those things of like what Dave always talks about it when people say, I want Selena Meyer to be my president. He's like, no, 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 no. You want Julia Louis Dreyfus to be yeah. your president. Yeah. You do not want Selena Meyer. Yeah. And I think that comes from Julia is so inherently engaging and charismatic oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and likable. Yeah. And Maybe I think there Mary. is a thing. Maybe I see Mary oh. underneath Shawnee. Yes. Yeah. You That's see nice. you see Mary in there and you're like, oh, I like this person. And the more and more evil she does, you're like, hmm. That's also why I, I that's so nice to hear. I, that's also why I, I loved going out for this part because because she, it, it's so not um, my, I don't have that power that Shawnee has or that kind of, that sort of um, acerbic, like uh, she's really um, just so mean and cold. And, uh, and I love that I got to play that because, you know. She's so controlling. So too. controlling. She's, yeah. so, she's always like, no, you're not doing that. We fucked and I'm leaving. Like yeah. from the get go, this is what's happening. You're yeah, not going to answer another question. You're wearing this. You're yeah. doing this. Yeah, yeah. You're you will get circumcised. <laughs> you're converting to yeah. Judaism. Yeah. Yes. Which I mean, like, I don't know. It speaks to you as a performer that 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 awful person remains likable, and you like are kind of cheering for her to get. Like more, uh, you are kind of cheering for her to get more casino licenses in Macau. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There is, yeah. there is a, so the naming of the Jeffersons thing when yeah. he hears like Rough Riders and he's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> there yeah. is, I feel like as a performer, one of those things that like when I go home and like I look in the mirror for two hours and say bad things about myself. <laughs> um, Surprised you can get your bathroom for that long. Nobody's <laughs> knocking on the door. Dad! 
<laughs> uh, no, I have public bathrooms. Oh, I know like a couple truck of stop. Oh. truck stops. You love truck stops. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Also, public parks, but at night. Um, <laughs> and uh, Right by the third hole at Griffith, you hang out in a car. Yeah, the- kind of a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so I think I have a tendency to put too much on stuff. And so whenever I whenever I can try to see an opportunity to throw something away, I like doing it. And I was, I had completely forgotten about this, but I really, I really liked, and I don't know, I don't want this to come across as like patting myself on the back, but only except for like, I saw a moment where I succeeded in doing the thing, which is like, we're called the Jeffersons probably. And like, (laughs) I think normal, you know what I mean? Like when he's so confidently being like, we're called the Jeffersons and that probably is in there. You know what I mean? It's so funny. You also did that with period. We're called the Jeffersons period. Like you, you said period. It's, you said probably oh, at one earlier? point you said yeah. period. Yeah, oh yeah. God, so it's even related to that. Like he's now hemming and hawing. Like yeah. earlier he says we're called the Jeffersons period. Yeah. And now it's we're called the Jeffersons probably. Like there's still some back channel debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think in that moment, I think like if that was like the first season of the show, I probably would have worked really hard to make sure everybody got that one yeah and it was just more of a throwaway like yeah and i was i was happy that in a way like had the confidence in the joke and in the writing of it and in the scene to just like let it go and i don't know i I liked that okay mary it gets better Uh uh-huh it gets better oh thanks yeah that's nice to hear well i was gonna say i do i probably said it before but i do think Jonah is the MVP of season six. You're so funny in the season so two. Funny. You really are. It's like such, and I guess I don't realize these things. Like I re- don't realize the writing until I go back. You know, like I haven't watched these shows until Tim and I started the podcast. Like I watched it once. Do you watch yourself? Like if you do, I know you've done your own movies and you've done a bunch of TV. Do you re- revisit them or you watch it once? What's your sort of traditional I've approach to your work? I've watched it once. There are a few things I've seen a few times, but it's, isn't it tough? Isn't don't you yeah. find it a bit tough? Yes, yeah. I agree. <laughs> it's hard. Why is it? What is the hard part? Where where, do you, where does your mind go when you watch yourself? Oh, I'm sort of like, it's just I find it to be a bit dangerous because I'm like I I find myself thinking, wow, th- that's what it looks like. <laughs> like that's what I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it can sort of really take the. I sort of don't. If I see it, it's better to feel it and do it and not see it. Because if yes. I see it, then, I, then I'm then i like, oh, that wasn't what it was in my head or whatever. Like okay. it can kind of take the air out of the, yep. take the confidence away. Sure. No. Not that there's that much. No, no. I, I, I similarly. <laughs> We're running dangerously low <laughs> yes. most of the time. I go to that place too. I don't, I don't watch these things a lot. Yeah, I, was, I, I was thinking about this. Uh, Recently, I know we've talked about. Uh, I, I I think you should leave one of my, oh my favorites. Gosh. Are you a fan of it? Yes, love it. We talked about this before. How uh, I think, and this was not something that I thought of. I want to give credit to the person who said this, but I can't remember who it was. They they talked about how like watching that show feels like the secret language that you had with your best friends from home yeah. even though they're it's not the language but it just inherits like all languages are all languages that are based on latin all are kind of similar <laughs> right but there is another thing that that show gets to which i think is like the verbalization or the action of the the unsaid and the unacted on deep deep lack of confidence yeah and and i think that sometimes on like my worst days when i'm like i can't do anything creative i'm bad at this how it comes out is that i say to myself you don't have any good car ideas <laughs> like and I, I you know what i mean like that guy who's like you do not have any good car ideas like <laughs> yeah. but that's how it comes into my brain and that way it's like you don't have any good car that's ideas so, wow but i mean it when i say it yeah yeah, yeah. that's a good way to but summarize that show that's yeah. a, that yeah. is a really great way have anyway. you have you said this to tim no, I haven't seen oh him. I gosh. also worry about saying like, you know, he's like, I just made a show, man. Like, I don't need to like, you know. <laughs> I actually, because uh, I know Sam is good buddies with yeah, Tim. Yeah, yeah. And I told Sam, I'm like, 
I have such a great sketch idea for Tim, but I'm not going to ask you for his email because I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's such an inspiring show that as a sketch writer for many years, I'm like, oh my God, I have a great idea. Like, because oh, I think yeah. I know his voice, but I, I didn't turn into that guy, but I love that show so much. I actually told Sam half of it, you know, I'm, I, I've been obsessing. I have an idea for Tim, but don't worry. I'm not going to ask for his email. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you'll yeah. run into him, and then it'll be. I don't know. Him. I hope I'm not that guy because it's very. It's just you can't do that. He I knows know. how to write yeah. sketches. Yeah, like yeah. he, there's no version. If I was in the writers' room, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I would of course pitch anything, but well, yes. you can just, you just go to the writers' room. Yeah, just go. Just show up. Just show just up. Show oh, it's up. that. It's like crowdsourced that I show. Know. Oh, okay. I mean, but um, what are they? What are they going to do? Ask you to leave? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I just pretend I left. So I just left my backpack. What are you guys doing? Yeah, you right? left your backpack. Yeah, yeah, you left your backpack. Why That's was good. your backpack in here? <laughs> in the writer's room. Yeah, yeah and there's <laughs> no backpack in here. Strategically left it. Yeah. So this is, Mary, this is something okay. I brought to Oh, me. I love this. So this is a gift from, um, I believe, Emmett or Jude, one of my father's days, and it's a, my dad, his stories and his words, and it's oh. an exercise book that uh, would inspire me to go back and remember, you know, my life and then I share it with my kids and it's like dad what kind of house did you grow up in and what was your old neighborhood like and oh, then I, that's so of course sweet. I never did it I never did sure, the book sure. but I mean it looks filled out well because I bring it to the show occasionally and I ask guests oh, question from the book so I'm gonna just pick it. two okay. and you can pick one or you can do both if you want to really okay. go for it so one question is dad forget that dad Mary mm -hmm. what rules did your parents have and which ones drove you crazy that's a good question. Okay, that is a good question. And dad, forget the dad, Mary. Okay. What are one or two things you did that you didn't tell your parents about? That's also a good question. Ooh, good question. And they probably won't listen to this podcast. No, and you don't have won't. to give the worst ones either. Okay, my great. my parents will have follow up questions because they will watch. But just so know that. But my parents don't know your parents. Oh and my, my mom okay. has never listened to this yeah. show. <laughs> God damn it. Aww. That's a wound that's never going to heal. <laughs> Um, so the first one was about rules. Yeah, what rules did your parents rules... have and which ones drove you crazy? Like There was a rule that I remember my grandmother had that I thought was so... <laughs> I can feel it already. So oh my stupid. God. And I it was always it. that you have to wear socks around the house. Really? Yes. And I was like, ugh! Like, I would come down when I stayed at uh, their house. I would come down in my bare feet and she would send me right back up to my room to go put socks on. And I was like, this is so dumb. Like, I hated it. What I was, it was did so she stupid. ever tell you a reason? I, I asked my mom at, at one point, because I was like, why do we have to walk around with socks? I don't care. My feet aren't cold. <laughs> and my mom, or yeah, my mom was like, well, you know, your grandmother uh, experienced a lot of, I think she said it was a hookworm, which is like, oh. happen with bare feet if yeah. you step on you can get hookworms, hookworm. yeah. and in the so, house though i guess yeah even if you went i don't outside, know yeah but but she was adamant about wearing socks i love how it drove so you crazy i can feel it oh i hated it yeah and it's like it's, it is probably it's prison it's prison. It's prison there is that thing where it is probably like also related to like whatever i'm thinking about like my grandmother and how she acted where it's like i don't know back in the depression like if you didn't wear shoes around the house you got poked by like one of like the hardwood floor nails and then you got tetanus and then your child was dead so yeah. but like there is none of that you know, there is none of there. Those stakes are not there anymore. But you can't get the 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 1930s out of your grandparents. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There was a when I was at Northern, I did a year abroad through Northern Illinois. Oh. I studied in uh, Salzburg, Austria for a year and I traveled all around Europe. But I live with this Austrian family. Very lovely. But they had an old like an aunt. They called her Aunt Rosita. And she was so old school. And whenever she came over, she would open the fridge right away and she would see the milk cartons and she would get angry. He's like, you don't leave milk in cartons. And she would find bottles. Right. Why? Why? And she would put the milk in bottles. And I don't know. Would it make it last longer? Easier to transport if like the bombing started or like because it was, you know, maybe she was of that generation. But it was so funny. Huh. Or the like, curtains would leak or. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they were likely like, to weird. cause bacteria. Yeah, or right. like we like they, we, they used to make them with lead. You know what I mean? The cartons like, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. I thought that was like that made me think of your grandma, like an old school reason for like tetanus or something like that. Yeah. 
One thing that I am uh, just currently bemoaning is the fact that I wasn't able to go back and watch all of the Shawnee episodes because oh, I I yeah. know that there are a lot of moments that I'm forgetting, and and so I wish I was able to talk to you about more of them. But oh like, yeah, you know, you know what? Hey, the mo- the moments speak for themselves, you know. We do you think that you, do, you, you think? just kind of like <laughs> did, that sounded really convincing? But as soon as it was done, I was like, did that mean anything? <laughs> This but is does what? anything mean anything? Anything, you know? you know I'm going to ask you one, Tim. Oh, okay. Just for fun. Oh, great. You can be vulnerable, too. What traits okay. do you have that your parents also had? Oh, your mom and dad are listening. Oh, oh And no. which side of your family? Well, you, gotta, you can pass. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Let's uh, and which, I, I can do a positive one. And which side of your family do you most resemble? Hmm. Um, oh, I definitely remember my resemble my mom's side of the family more. Okay. And I think one thing that I got. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go positive on both of these. I think I got my dad's family's work ethic of like. Nice. Um, You're very so industrious. Yeah. yeah so you there's are. that. And I think on my I think I got my mom's sense of humor. Oh. So I think those two That's things great. combined are really are really great. And I can also then see in our kids, I can see my mom's side of the family very present in oh. Hopper. Uh, I'm going to give you one more, and okay. Mary, you can jump into this. since we okay. don't have you very often. Oh my yeah. gosh, you got what? I'll them. give you two choices. One is what music did you grow up listening to, and the second one can be who were your best friends from childhood and what were they like. So each of you pick one of those. Okay, okay. you go first. You're our guest. Um, okay, well, or you I'll... can pass for 20 points. Oh you pass, gosh, pass, and if he okay. gets it wrong, you get 20 more oh points. Oh my gosh, I okay. love that. Oh I'm going to judge them. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> and you have 12 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, th- no, I'll say about the, the music I listened to. I loved, no doubt. I Ooh. loved. Oh yeah. Prodigy. I Ooh. loved. I know. I had very strange, uh, like very eclectic taste. I loved um, Three Eleven. I was really into like. What's Three Eleven? I don't know that. That one. was like a skater type. Yeah, you know, it was sort uh, of like crusty skater. So yeah, it was cow, like real grunge. Like, okay, grunge-y. real like you know. Uh, didn't they do that song "Down"? Was that their song? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Wait, 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 down, down. That one. Yeah, uh, that was you maybe trust your instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let go of regret. Uh, and then I loved TLC. Ooh, <laughs> great! You had quite a yeah. Yeah, I loved it. And then the very first concert I ever saw in person was Lilith Fair. And love Ooh, that. great! It was a great one. Where That's were you? Great. What city? That was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. Which was a few hours drive from my hometown. Awesome. Great it's airport great. in Charlotte. Love that airport. Love that airport. Yeah, you all airport. those rocking chairs. Yeah. yeah. Love that airport. You know what? They those threw out chairs. some rocking chairs in the Las Vegas airport. I think I saw that. Was it the Las Vegas I saw airport? the difference. You know what? Here's the thing. Not nearly as nice as the Charlotte ones. Well, it's tough to. All right. Who were your best be. friends in Charlotte? That's 100 points, Mary. Oh, yes. Wait, that wasn't even yes. part of the scale. You didn't even. I didn't even know there was 100 points on the board. You s- Sounds like somebody's afraid they're going to lose. <laughs> uh, best, are you ready? Yeah. Be- your best friends from childhood and what were they like? Who were they? Uh, still friends with them to this day. Aww. We had like a we had like a little group of of uh, Gabe, Nick, uh, Gimp, who we called Gimp because uh, Pulp Fiction came out, mm-hmm. and somebody called him Gimp like as a joke, and he's and he did that thing that you never do. Which is he was like, I'm not the gimp. We, why are you calling me the gimp? And we we're like, oh, well, that's it. Now you're going to, yeah. I mean, 30 years, you're going to be middle aged. Don't and we're ever s- draw attention to a nickname. There is like a really <laughs> funny tweet that I saw a couple months ago about like, you got to keep your head on a swivel because like a friend of mine 20 years ago said like, got too excited about having burgers one day and we still call him burgers. Like it was that oh. moment. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and Willie. Uh, and so these were also the people like in high school, like we would, this was like the group uh, that like Bo Webb and Brian Husky have, like yeah. they would make high school movies together. And we're still friends, kind of scattered around. One's an architect, one makes trails. He does like land trust work. Oh, and wow. one's an oceanographer and climate scientist. And the other one is uh, a filmmaker and like has like won a bunch of Emmys working for Nova, like documentary sort of. Nova, like world documentary yeah. stuff. He's like really done a lot of good stuff. That's like, awesome. and were they different than you, or were you all kind of into the same things? We were all kind of into the same things, okay. like basketball and stupid jokes, and okay. just being generally like sort of lovable idiots. I think was our 
was yeah. our vibe. My friend, my friend thing that still lives on is is bringing up old girlfriend names like on a text chain, like a girl you dated in high school, like you'll be texting about whatever. He's like, oh yeah, what does uh, Vicky think about Vicky? Vicky, I won't say her name. Vicky G think about that, and it's like, oh burn. It's like, how is it a burn? In well, you had a way, girlfriend, like yeah. at that point, you had a girlfriend yeah, in high school, like, and she was cool, oh, and like, cool. but it's just like I know something about you. You dated Vicky. <laughs> Um, well, we have two questions that we ask every guest. Okay. Uh, uh, my question, the better one is. Oh wait, by the way, you won. You got like four, oh, po four points. You okay, got like a hundred and twelve. That's even like okay. how? Where did the extra twelve come from? Tim, the more this you is can tell. Really, like what you're doing right now is really, like it's in, really sad. Like oh my you're, god. You're just like really, like just you know, just accept. And okay. you can use yeah. those points to pick from the prize boutique when you leave. Oh my God, really? Okay, because I saw that. And but everything's at least 25, so you can just throw yours away. Okay, great. Yeah, you, uh, I think your choices are a handful of like mixed nuts <laughs> that Perfect. a lot of people have reached in there. Uh, and or a some, liquid death. Or a liquid death. Okay. Or there's also like uh, uh, two bags of popcorn of like smart. You don't want to go in there though. They, they're like half eaten. At both oh, of them huh. are open though. Yeah. Both of them yeah, are yeah. open but unfinished. Hmm. Um, okay. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Okay. So how many members of Congress do you think you could beat up? Oh my gosh. Oh, probably I would say 16. Out of 435, right? Or 535? 535. <laughs> Out of 535. I guess I don't know what they're all, what they're all like. I know Do, some of them are in my head as like, oh, I, they, they're on the news and stuff. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like I would need to, I would need to see some stats on each okay. congressperson before I could say. But I feel like confidently 16. Okay. Uh, can you do, do me a favor? Do a little bit of confidently 16. Do a little bit of research. This episode isn't going to come out for a little while. Oh, Just sure. text me and I'll do like a quick up. I'll like put in a little quick Oh, yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, and the other question is, the lesser question really. If you weren't a comedian, actress, writer, what could you see yourself doing for a living? Or what sort of field would you be curious about pursuing as an adult? Ooh. See, it feels like a better question the way she's like, the Congress one, she was like, uh, yeah. I'll give you a dumb number. Uh. This one feels like we know more about Mary after this one, oh, but whatever. This is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look okay. what she just I said. Think look what she just I said. would this is. be a, oh, yo, yo, yo. I feel a, like. Uh. A field. Well, there, it, there's yeah. fields I'm interested in, but I don't think I'd necessarily be good at. Like, I'm really, I love astronomy. I don't think I'd be good at it. I don't think I'm smart enough to be like okay. a physicist. Okay. But I love stars and planets and that that kind of science. I think is really interesting. Cool. Okay. I always said I would. I would love to like serve coffee at NASA. <laughs> be around I'd smart love to be people. Around it. Yes. Yeah. Well, do you think they're allowed to discuss stuff with you, like with the barista? Yeah. Well, they have no choice if I'm in mission control and I'm bringing them coffee. Yeah. They're okay. gonna be talking to each other, and I'm gonna hear it. Oh. You know I mean? Okay. Yeah. I what do you got, that. guys? What's the what's the gossip what's on the, gossip? the lunar rover? Yeah, what's going on on <laughs> Mars? Are we going there or what? <laughs> <laughs> Any new Hubble picks? Yeah. <laughs> What's the scoop? Whenever, the hubs? whenever a new, hub, whenever a new hub drops, you're just like, mm, I've seen it. Yeah, I already saw it. Mm -hmm. Listen All to it. Pictures. I listened to Mars the other you day. You were the no reason. <laughs> you were the reason that the Hubble was all blurry when it first went up because you touched it. Uh, yeah, I then, touched yeah. it. I, I shouldn't have done. It. Yeah, I know. I, I was too excited. I asked them if I could touch it. They said yes, but I touched it too hard. <laughs> And they fixed it in space. That's amazing. Yeah, That's so cool. That's... It costs a lot to do that, but. Yeah. So cool that they could do that. Mary, do you have anything else you would like to throw in? Is there anything else you would like to uh, promote? To promote? Yeah. Our promote? listeners oh, get yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Where can they see you next? You could see me. I'm in a movie that's out on Hulu called Self Reliance. So you can see that. Okay. That's Tell with, me more um, about that. That's uh, written and directed by and starring Jake Johnson. Oh, cool. Very fun, funny, action packed movie. Uh, real fun cast. So that's coming out um, in early. January. Okay. okay. I'm doing shows in LA all the time, and then you can check me out on movies like Senior Year on Netflix or Happiest Season on Hulu. Excellent. Yeah. I love and it. on Veep, and on Veep. And on Veep, of course. Of <laughs> yeah, course. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mary, it's great to see you. Thank you so great much for coming. Yeah, thank you for, for coming me. out. Yeah. 
Thank um, you. Oh, we'll do the outro. Uh, thank you for listening or watching. This is uh, this has been Second in Command. Uh, I was Timothy Simons. I played Jonah Ryan. On... So Matt Walsh. That's Mary Holland, right? Did I say it right? Yeah, you said that right. Okay. And thank you guys for being here. Oh, you can. Oh, I think it's very important that you rate, review, and subscribe, and then and, and tell your friends and do the thing where you post about it on social media. Or this whatever. feels a little thirsty when we it do does, this. Man. We're like I don't begging know. for I mean, like. It's just, but it just feels like them. no. But it is important. It really it seems to be important. Unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately. But we do yeah. thank them. Like the YouTube's growing, right? Yeah, the YouTube's growing. Thank you for watching there. Yeah. Thank you for kind of ruining my morning. Um, I'm going to, I just real Why? quick. Are you reading comments? I read some comments. Oh, about Tim, about what are you Norm doing? Morning. About that. We, we released the Norm Mornstein episode, and there were comments that were like, uh, you know, this guy, uh, like, you know, well, there's a reason that this happens. Uh, yeah, civics is pretty hard, I guess. Like these, I'm like, this guy's a oh. constitutional scholar. And we have like people being like, uh, do you know anything about civics? And it's like, motherfucker, this is all he's ever studied. It was very frustrating. I told this to Aaron right before we came on, and he was just like, don't do it. Just don't look. Just don't yeah, ever never look. never look. Never look. But never I never look. What, this it's morning, hard to resist the temptation. It's but, hard. It but isn't. Then you no, get, it isn't. Then you it's get not hard. called Bill Hader, and, and, then, <laughs> and, and then, then you you're think, like, oh, that's right. But what do you, you know? What? <laughs> are you looking for something that's going to feed your ego or validate yeah. you? I think you're looking for that, and you're not well, going to find you're it. You're not going to get it. I yeah. think in, in this circumstance, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to engage with the people. Oh, I see. Yeah. Who with listen your fans. to the fans, like yeah. to the people that enjoy the show. I want to make sure that that if they have a question or if they have a nice comment that I respond and I am appreciative of and that. That's okay. Nice. Yeah. And then also I want to call all of them Bill Hader and then maybe they'll stop commenting. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. All right. Thank P you. Peace.